Good morning. How are you doing? This is Reverend William C. Wilson from Quinn Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Frederick, Maryland. I greet you in the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want to also honor those and I call it to memory for this Memorial Day weekend, those who served in our armed forces, those who are on the front line doing the things to, to keep this nation great. And we just give God all the glory and the honor for their service. Even though those who are on the front line now during this pandemic, we honor them and we lift them up to you that they be able to uh, be blessed for the service that they're doing to keep us safe. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now because we look to the hills where help coming from and we know our help comes from you. Our eyes are lifted up to you because you were the one who made the heavens and the earth. You created all things and all things were created for your good. So Lord, we just thank you right now that we're able to rise up this morning and come into your house to praise you, to glorify, to worship you, O oh Father God, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we don't know what the end will be, but we know, oh Father God, that we will trust you to the very end, oh Father God. No matter if anything comes our way, oh Father God, wars or pestilence or uh, famine, oh Father God, we still will trust and honor you. So, Lord, have your way. Forgive us of our trespasses, oh, Father God, those things that we have done by word, thought, or deed, oh, Father God. Lord, we know that you are a God that already sent your son, Jesus Christ, who forgiven us of all our sins, past, present, and future, oh, Father God. So, Lord, let your anointing fall upon this service, that as we all decrease, you increase, oh, Father God. Let a fresh anointing fall upon our pastor who brings forth the message that all may be blessed and hear thus what the Lord has said through him. Lord, we pray for those who are not able to get out. In fact, we all can't get out because we're still on lockdown. But nonetheless, be with those in the, in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, and on their beds of affliction, oh, Father God, wherever they may be right now, meet their needs. As you say, you are a provider for all our needs. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And let the glory of the Lord be revealed this day through this message that all may be glorified and blessed, that we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. At this time, if you open up your Bibles, wherever you may be, to Mark chapter 5, I'll be reading for your hearing scriptures 1 through 20. That's Mark chapter 5, 1 through 20. And it reads, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of uh, gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshiped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have, have, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Mm. I adjure thee by God, that you torment me not. But he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, mm. for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there were, now there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and, enter, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently, violently down a steep place into the sea. 
They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they fed the swine, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and to see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legions sitting clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray to him to depart out of their coast. And when he had, and when he was come unto the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and has compassion on you. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus has done for him. And all the men did marvel. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearers of his holy word. I present to you Pastor Luke J. Robinson. Thank you, uh, Reverend Wilson, and God bless you, and thank you again for that prayer. Thank all of you for uh, tuning in with us once again uh, as we share a message of hope and encouragement in these times of difficulties. We thank God so very much. In Psalm 146, it says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul, while I live, praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my beings. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man whom, whom there is no help. Father, we come today to thank you and ask you, Lord, to pour out your living spirit upon us today in a powerful way, that wherever we are today, that you will speak to us and meet us right where we need to be met by you today. Whatever we're going through today, let your Holy Spirit come upon us and guide us that we may bring you much glory, much praise, much honor, and that, Lord, you and the angels in heaven will see that we really love the Lord. So, God, speak through us and speak to us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, of course, all across the nation, this weekend, we will be celebrating this Memorial Day, and we thank God, as has already been mentioned, uh, for those who have served in the uh, militaries, who have served uh, our country uh, over the years and have been a blessing. Thank God for that sacrifice you have made. It was a tremendous sacrifice, and we thank God for it today. I want to get right into this message today because I find this message will be a, hopefully an encouragement to all of you today, and um, we trust that it will be a blessing and in a mighty way. I want to use as a subject today, you can get out of your mess. And I think that title in itself is, is one of encouragement. You can get out of your mess. Now, our text today, as read by uh, uh, Reverend uh, Wilson, came out of uh, John, uh, Mark, excuse me, chapter 5, uh, and it, it talked about, uh, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him uh, out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. pieces. Neither could anyone tame him, and always night and day, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out with a, and, and cutting himself with a lot. When he saw Jesus from afar, he, he, he ran and worshipped him. I think that is a tremendous scripture, amen? Now, our text today comes from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, it's chapter 5, and it is the account of Jesus dealing with a man who was 
was, uh, was in a terrible mess. He was possessed with a pack of demons. These devils, these evil and dark spirits had taken control of his body and, and life. This man is in a desperate situation. However, Mark chapter 4 uh, and verse 35 through 41 tells us that prior to Jesus' meeting and dealing with this demonic man, that Jesus sent away the multitude that he was ministering to, and he and his disciples entered into a boat to go to the other side of the sea. And as they were going to the other side, a terrible storm came up. And Jesus was asleep in the boat, uh, in the stern or the back part of the boat, and the disciples came and greatly fearful, uh, were very great, greatly fearful, and they awoke Jesus, and, and they said to him, do not you care that we perish? Do you not care that we are about to perish? Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and, and, and there was a great calm. Then he then said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And I believe today that God is also saying to us that uh, we, we have to have faith in the midst of what's going on in our lives. And sometimes we can get all tied up in a mess. Our lives get all messed up. This guy in our text today, I think you will agree with me, had a messed up life. And after Jesus had said that uh, to the disciples, he said, after he said to spoke to the, the, the wind and to the sea, he said, peace be still, everything calm down. And uh, he asked them the question, why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? And I think God is asking us the same question today as we go through uh, our circumstances. Even with the corona uh, virus, he's asking us, how is it that you are so fearful? I mean, aren't you in the boat with me? Aren't you walking with me? Aren't you trusting me? How is it that you have no faith? Well, you know, uh, Jesus said in, 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 in the Bible, without faith is impossible to please me. It's impossible to believe God without faith. For they that come to God must first believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently uh, seek him. So God is saying that faith is a thing that helps you to get through your mess. Faith is a thing that helps you to see God and to, to be encouraged by God. Amen. And, and, and when, the, when the disciples saw that Jesus spoke to the storm and the storm it was calm, uh, the Bible said, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, who can this be? Who can this be? Who is this man? We are walking with him, but, but uh, 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 that even the wind and the sea obey him. Man, that's exciting. I like that thing. Who can this be? They wanted to know now. Who is this Jesus that we have in the boat with us? I think sometimes we need to ask the question that when, uh, after we have asked Christ Jesus to come into our lives, we need to ask the question, who can this be that's inside of us? We have this power that's inside of us. Now Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comforter. I'm sending you the Holy Ghost, and he's going to come, and he's going to dwell in you. And he's, Jesus said, then my Father and I, and the three of us, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity, will be inside of you. And I was suggesting at the, at the Bible study the other night that, that what is so necessary is so often that because Jesus sent the comforter to be with us, Jesus sent the comforter to be inside of us so that we can talk to God in the person of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can direct us and guide us and give us peace and help us to have assurance when the storms of life are raging, he, we can stand and we can know and we can be like the disciples ask the question and have the answer when, when they ask, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? We can say it's the Lord, the God who have come into our hearts and into our lives uh, and is, uh, is, is, is to dwell with us forevermore. 
Well, in Mark chapter 5, uh, 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 and Mark chapter 5 is really a wonderful passage, the first 20 verses uh, of which we're going to talk about today. It's a wonderful passage of Scripture. This is, this is where our text begins, but I, I don't want you to forget about the storm that the disciples just went through. Because all of us, from at one point or another, will go through a storm. You can bank on it. It's the promise. You're going to go through a storm. But, but, but never forget who's in the boat. Never forget who's in your life. Never forget who's, who's, who's controlling your circumstances. Now, sometimes people think, well, right today, we have a lot of people saying that the scientists, we ought to look to the scientists and we ought to look to uh, uh, this one and look to that one. Sure, there are some things they can help us with. Even uh, they, as they deal, deal with the weather and they tell you today it's going to rain and that day it doesn't rain. And then they tell us uh, it's not going to rain and it rains. And, and, and sometimes they tell us it rains and it rains. So we, we, we listen to them, but we must always listen to what the Lord is saying. Because he's never been wrong. He's never been wrong. He, he's always right. He's always on target. Because he could even speak to the waters and speak to the winds and speak to the storms, even the storms that come into our lives. And he can say to those storms, be, 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 be at peace. Be calm. So the disciples, uh, the storm, the uh, the. The storm that the disciples just went through is so important for us to understand. Every now and then, we will go through a storm. And when Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, immediately they met a man, a man, a man uh, out of the tombs that had an unclean spirit. Now, the unclean spirit deals with the fact that this man had been possessed by demonic forces, by, by the forces of hell itself, by the forces of demons, and, and, and Satan's uh, uh, um, um, supporters, of demons and followers of Satan had, uh, had actually taken over this man. And I want you to take notice of what the scripture says about this man, because I want to make a, I, I'm trying to make the argument that this man is, uh, he's got a lot of mess going on. Yeah. Uh, and when, when, when the Bible said in verse 2 of Mark uh, chapter uh, 5, it said, when he, Jesus, had come, on the, had come out of the boat, immediately there met him a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit. The first thing that the, the Bible says about the man's got an unclean spirit. So I think we're going to begin to develop that this man, he's got a mess on his hands. He's got, he's got some stuff going on. Then verse number three says that uh, who had his dwelling among the tombs. Where is this man living? He's living in the graveyard. Now, I don't tell you right now, anybody that's living in the graveyard, they must seriously have some problems. And the Bible said he was uh, 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 dwelling among the tombs in the graveyard. And, he, and they couldn't bind him. And I think the problem here with the, the society, the community, is they, they, they're afraid of this guy. And they, they, wanted to, they wanted to bind him up so that he wouldn't run into their, into their, into their little community and, 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 and harm some of them. But the Bible said he, he, he was dwelling among the tombs and, and no one could bind him even with chains. Now, man, that, he's pretty strong if he can break out of chains. And, 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 and so he's got that going on because he had often been bound and shackled and chained. And the chains had been pulled apart by him. And the shackles broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So what we see with this man is he's in the graveyard, he's, in, he's sleeping there, he's dwelling there, he, he's bound up by the, the people are binding him, they, they, they're trying to help him to get out of his stuff, uh, they put him in shackles and chains, they, and yet he was so strong by the powers of, of the demonic powers that was in him that he couldn't, he couldn't overcome. Now, now this is the thing, now they say couldn't tame him. But look what it says about him in verse number five. Always. I, you know, in this circumstance, I don't like the word always. Always night and day. Night and day. Do you know what that means when you say always night and day? It means that 
that he is jacked up 24-7. He's got something going on at all times. If you are hanging out with someone like this guy, you will be jacked up too. Because you, couldn't, you wouldn't be able to handle it. You wouldn't be able to handle someone who is jacked up 24-7, always around the clock. If you live with a person like that and they eject, this man is messed up. This man, the Bible said, he is running through the mountains and he's in the tombs and he's crying out and he's cutting himself with stones. I wonder why. He's cutting himself with stones. It seems like to me, it's like the lay, lay, uh, it's like suicide on the layaway plan. He's cutting himself a little by little. He's trying to overcome the pain. He's trying to get to overcome what he's got going, going on, but he can't make it. He can't do it through the process he's going through. His stuff is so bad and his pain is so deep and his hurt is so long that he is um, all messed up. <laughs> I bet some of you listening to me today, I bet some of you messed up too. And, and, and I know there's somebody maybe listening to me per chance. They are messed up and they're wondering if God can do anything to help them. They're wondering if they're going to have to be jacked up for 27, uh, uh, 24-7 or if they're going to ever be able to overcome. I have news for you. This brother here is going to meet his match. Don't you agree with me that this, that this man is desperately messed up? Don't you think he is? Don't you agree that this man needs some help? Now the Bible says of him, he's always, always, day and night. No peace, no hope, no joy, no love, no, 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 no power, no victory. Day and night. Don't you agree that this man needs help? Well, where can he find help at? Where can he find help with this kind of a situation? If his circumstance is as bad as it appears to us by just reading the text, he is a messed up kind of guy. But the Bible tells us in Mark 6, 6 when he saw Jesus, when he saw Jesus afar off, he, wor he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment. I want to talk to you and suggest to you that there are two voices you're talking. The first voice is the man who has been hijacked by the devil. The second voice is the demonic forces that's inside of him. The first voice is that man. The Bible said when he saw, when he, he saw Jesus afar uh, off, he ran. Now, they could not hold this man back because of the power that, that Satan had over him. But when this, man, when this man saw Jesus, somebody help me, when he saw Jesus, he began to see, my Lord, I, I got to get to Jesus. The devil can't hold me back. And so what he did, he, 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 he against the, the demons that was inside of him, he got to where Jesus was, and he said, he cried out to the Lord, he, he cried out, he worshipped him. Now, how do I know that that's the man? Because the devil does not worship Jesus. That man, because something inside of him, and I believe that when God was, Jesus was on the boat, and when the storm was raging, I believe that Jesus had an appointment with this man, and so when Jesus was taking his nap after ministering on the other side of the sea, I believe that Jesus said, I got an appointment, I'm going to take a nap, I got a man that's messed up, his life is tore up, bent up, and broken down. Huh? I got to get to him. Now, if you're sitting out there, wherever you are, or standing, sleeping, whatever you're doing, hopefully you're not sleeping through the message, but nonetheless, but if, 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 you, if you are going through the storm right now, there is a Savior that wants to get next to you. Some of us know about it. Some of your family, somebody know, they know about the fact that Jesus can make the difference in your life. 
I've been through it. If it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, where would I be now? I would have been just swallowed up. So he comes and he worshiped the Lord. But inside of him, another voice cries out. And that voice asked the question, what have I do to do with you, Jesus? We have nothing in common. We're not on the same plane. That's that demonic force inside of me. Sometimes when we are going about trying to do God's work, when we, when we are trying to change our life and walk with God, we come to the conclusion sometimes we find out that, that there's another voice. There's another power trying to pull us back. But this guy, this man, though he was messed up, jacked up, whatever he was, he, when he saw the Lord, he said, I got to get to the Lord. And brothers and sisters, that's what we have to do today. In, in spite of what's going on in our lives, let's get to the Lord. We can even overcome this, 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 this coronavirus. We can overcome anything in Christ Jesus if we trust God. We can't do it ourselves. The, the, the boys on the boat, when Jesus was going through the storm, they tried to bring that boat under control. And when they saw they couldn't do it, they said, look, Jesus is in the back. Go talk to Jesus and see why is he letting us perish. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God allows you to go through a storm so you can learn how to live outside of a storm. When I learned how to live outside of a storm, I'll begin to praise the Lord. I'll begin to worship him. I'll begin to lift him up. I'll begin to give him the praise and the glory. And when, when you understand that when you praise the Lord, God inhabits the praises of his people. And when you and I praise the Lord, for goodness sakes, God bless us. Because that's what he does for those who praise him. So the devil said inside the man, what do, uh, do you have? What do you what? Uh, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? It amazes me. It amazes me how the devils know who Jesus is. I get so amazed by that. And the people that Jesus has come to save and come inside of them and give them the, give, has given them his word, they don't seem to know who he is. But the demons know. They back off. They run, and you can see in this account a little bit, they're going to beg God to have mercy on them when, in fact, they have mercy on nobody else. So where can you find help? You can always find help when you're in a mess, when you go looking to Jesus. And Jesus, Jesus said to that man, I said to that, that dude that was speaking outside of that demonic spirit, I should say, that was speaking to him outside out of that man. Jesus said, come out of the man. You unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? Name's always important. And without Jesus, uh, Jesus saying a word, without him saying a word, there was a voice from the man who had de demon, been demonically possessed, who cried out with a loud voice, and Jesus said, what have I do with you, the son of, of the most high? In, in this account, in this Sad account, there are three things we ought to consider. There are three things going on here. Number one, there's the actions of Satan. Number two, the actions of the society. And then, my God, there is the actions of a savior. Very briefly, uh, uh, let me examine Satan. We live in a day and a time where a lot of folks will try to tell you that the devil is not real. Real. That's what they try to tell you. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you today that the Satan, the devil, is real and he has no, has no intentions to give you anything but hard times and troubles. For the devil and his demons will mess up your life. They'll mess up your marriage. They will mess up your children. They will mess up your family, your communities, your state, your nation, and the world. He does not want you to have peace. He wants you to be messed up all your life. And so many of us are, are running around, even now, all jacked up. <laughs> and if you let uh, the devil and his buddies, they will even try to tear the church down. 
But I'm thankful to one thing. God, God said that, 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 that hell itself cannot destroy the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We are more than victorious. we are more than victorious. We are victorious in the name of the Lord. And beloved, what God is showing us now, we've got to come back together. We've got to get back into the prayer meetings. We've got to come back. The world outside, the, the folks are working, saying we've got to come back to the church. The church is saying, well, I, well how long will we going to be out? Beloved, it's up to you. It's up to the, the power of the living God in you to make that difference so you can come and stand. We've got to come, God said, not to forsake the uh, assembling of yourselves as some will in the last days. And I see what the devil is trying to do. He's trying. If the church stay apart much further, you know what's going to happen? We're going to lose some folks because they're going to begin to think that they don't need God. But if we ever needed the Lord, we sure don't need him now. So let's not let him slip away. Now we have to do all this with, with the proper caution, of course, but we cannot be afraid. The devil, we got people, listen to me, we got people in the hospital who put their lives on the line for those who are sick. We got people who work in, in the fire department uh, who put their lives on the line and they go into places even now where the, even when there is a coronavirus. Uh, they, we got people, the nurses, I said, and the doctors and, and the lawyers. We got military people as we celebrate this week. They put their lives on the line. The church of the living God has to put their lives on the line for the cause of Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to say amen in this house. But the devil and his demons will mess up everything. And it's, it's important. It is important that we realize that the devil can't do anything unless we give him some cooperation. And guess what? God can't do no thing, anything with us either unless we cooperate. We have to cooperate with God. You know what James 4 says? Four, seven. So place yourself under God's authority. Resist the devil. And he will turn away, run away from you. He will flee from you. The word flee means been gone. Because the devil needs a, a willing soul and a, and a body to work with and a, and, and, and a body to work through. So, so his aim is to be in our minds. And to do his dirty work. In our minds to give us fear. In our minds to turn us back from the things of God. If we ever again needed the Lord, we need him now. The devil wants to mess us up. He wants to confuse us. He wants to have us running through the places of darkness and living in the places of the dead. The devil wants to take control of us. He wants, he wants to use and abuse us. He wants to mess me up. He wants to mess you up. He wants you to be jacked up. My brothers and sisters, it's important to realize that you can't allow the devil any time at all. If you give the devil one minute, he wants an hour. You give him an hour, he wants the day. You give him the day, he wants the week. You give him the week, he wants the month. You give him the, 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 the month, he wants the year. If you give him the year, he wants forever. Hmm. You can't give him anything. I like this brother, this, this guy that has, has this demonic uh, possession. I like it because... Man, I, I mean, he, he sees how bad his mess is. And he knows he needs some help. He knows it. And boy, I like this because, listen what, he, what the Bible says about it. He saw Jesus afar off. And somehow, don't ask me how, I don't know. Somehow, he knew that was his help. You've got to know from whence cometh your help. Now your help comes from the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Hallelujah. The devil wants to control you. He wants to abuse you. 
Now, when you come to God's house, talking about how you love the Lord, but never come to Sunday school, Bible study. And when you do come, you come late. And you leave early. You are setting yourself up for a mess up. But not only did the man cut himself with stones and was a terror to himself and others, but the text revealed that he set up his residence in the graveyard. He didn't live in a house such as you and I, but he lived in a graveyard. And when he laid down, a, a tombstone probably was his pillow. For he set up residence in the graveyard. Satan will mess you up. You don't know your right hand from the left. You don't know what's up from down. You can be such a fool when you're dealing with him. But there's a breakout. When you see Jesus, you can see deliverance on the way. You will, well, we, we took a look at Satan. Now, what about society with the story in this man? Uh, Satan in this, in, 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 in this man's life took control of it. What about society? society? In the text, we see that the society tried to isolate this man, put him in isolation. 14 days maybe, I don't know. Uh, he put him in isolation. Again, they, they probably put him in the graveyard. <laughs> the way he was acting, though, I don't think not too many people put him anywhere. He was very powerful because the satanic, everything that's powerful is not necessarily uh, the power of God. Sometimes Satan's power is working in people as well. But this man couldn't stay in the graveyard. So the society thought, the, uh, the community thought, if they chain and feather him, uh, uh, their problem would be over. Mm -hmm. And I've been working in, I worked in the prisons for maybe uh, about 30 years. I worked in the prisons over 30 years, come to think of it. And I, I've worked with people in rehabs and all that stuff. We've sent them to rehabs. We've sent them to all these kind of places. We've sent them to thinking that somehow they could overcome their problems by incarceration, by putting them in these places. Sometimes it happens, but for the most part, it very seldom happens unless those persons in prison or anywhere else come to recognize their need for Jesus Christ. Nobody can do you like Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. He is your hope, your, 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 your strength, your power, your, your everything. So the community did what they could. They revealed that the demons, that the demons in him were so strong that the chains uh, wouldn't hold. In other words, the power of the things that the community put in place to help the man or to keep the man off of them didn't work. Well, what could work? What did work? Did you ever ask yourself that question? Now, 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 now let's talk about the Savior, Jesus. Jesus is the Savior, the one who has more books written in his name than any library can uh, contain or hold, the one that hurt couldn't kill, sin could not seduce him, death could not keep him. And the grave could not hold him. That's what we're talking about. He's the living God that can help us and be there. Who, who can this be? The disciples asked when they were on the boat that even the wind and the sea obey him. Who can this be that in the midst of the coronavirus that can help us and encourage us and keep us on the straight and narrow? Because if I take my eyes off Jesus, I'll become nervous. My blood pressure will go up. I say to people now, how many of you know it is appointed unto us once to die? How many of you know that? But after this, the judgment. So what are you more concerned about, the dying or the judgment? <laughs> what are you more concerned about? I suggest to you, unless the rapture comes, the judgment's going to be more important. And even if the rapture comes, you're still going to meet the judgment. And the judgment is, you will be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. And in the meantime, God is not going to let anything happen to us, but such as he wills 
and he desired. The Bible said when he saw Jesus from afar off, he ran. I love it. He not only ran, but he worshiped God. And that is really what God is looking for today. Some of us, all of us, every one of us, to worship him, to adore him. There's more in the Bible spoken about praising God and worshiping God than probably anything else. The book of the Psalms and the, uh, the Proverbs and even when we come to uh, Philippians, it all talking about uh, praising and giving God glory. It's about his glory. I, I, I'm, I'm just blessed by the fact that this man went to Jesus. And Jesus started dealing with this man and Jesus began to uh, deal with those demons that was in him and cast the demons out of him. And... Um, so my question is, now, the, the society, the people tried to do something to help him. Uh, the people tried to help him, and I talked to you about the, the, the impact Satan was having on his life because they, the Satan had come inside of him. And I think some of our children and some of our family members uh, are messed up because uh, we have um, not shown them clearly this Jesus Christ who can help them and do all things. So, so, so the, the, the demons that was inside of the man, listen to this. The demons that was inside the man asked Jesus, because Jesus said, you're coming out of there. They said, can we go into the hogs? Can we go into the pigs? And Jesus gave them permission, and they went into the pigs. It's an amazing thing that happened here. Um, when they went into the pigs, the pigs ran over the cliff, ran into the water, and drowned themselves. Now, my question to you is if a pig, if, if the devil, if the pigs can't take the devil, why are you messing with the devil? I mean, I, you don't think of a pig as being too sharp. But after looking at the pigs, I may change my attitude about a lot of folks. I think the pigs got a thing going on. They couldn't have take the devil, but we manifest ourselves. We, we play around with the hogs. We mess around with the things of the devil, and, and, um, and we end up. Now, the, the Bible said that when, when the hogs was killed, the people who, verse number 14, so those who fed the swines fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. So the people in the, in, in the city came out to the countryside where the hogs are. And they came to Jesus and saw, listen to this, saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion. So they came back. They saw him. They saw the hogs too. That they were dead. But listen what the Bible said about the man who had been demon-possessed and had the legion. The, the legion means uh, uh, 12,000 of them dogs, uh, 2,000 is a legion. Uh, uh, I forget how much is a legion. I think a legion is 2,000. Uh, don't hold me to that. Uh, but it, it was a, it's, a pack, it's a pack of de demons. Uh, he had the legion inside of him sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. Now, here's this guy that's just messed up. Here is the guy that's running through the tombs. Here is the guy that's got his home in the, in the, in, 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 in the, in the graveyard. Here is this guy that's cutting himself, suicidal, messed up, mingled. Can you imagine? He's all cut up from all this cutting and carrying on with himself for many years. Now, he, the Bible says, now you see him sitting. Now you see him clothed. He's running through this thing. He's running through the tombs. He's naked. You know, the devil will take your, make you take your clothes off. And the Bible said not only was he sitting, not only was he clothed, the, devil, the Bible said the man was in his right mind. And the Bible says to us, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, but of love, power, 
and a sound mind. We ought to be, of all people, having a sound mind. We, our eyes must be focused on the Lord. We are seeing what God is seeing. We see the invisible. We know that God's on our side. And we will not turn back. Even if death comes, we're going to die with him. Somebody ought to say amen wherever you are. He was sitting. He was clothed. And he's in his right mind. That's what happened, beloved, when you and I come to Christ. He gives us peace. When this epidemic, this pandemic came upon us, and I, and I was dealing with all of this stuff, and I began to uh, uh, listen to the news. You listen to the news. It's bad all the time. It's bad all the time. And then I began to listen to the word of God, and I began to listen to what God is saying, and then God brought peace to me. I was sitting. I'm not running around no more. I'm, 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 I got, I'm clothed in the righteousness of God that if life or death comes, it doesn't matter. I belong to him. And then I can think like the Lord would have me to think. And the Bible said when the people saw that this demonic man, this man who had been messed up, was straightened up, they, when they saw that, the Bible said they were afraid. They were afraid. Now, let me tell you what they're afraid of. They're afraid of this Jesus. They don't, they don't understand him. They don't know how he can do this. They don't know. They tried. They tried. Come on. Come on. Let's give them some credit. Did they try to chain him up? Did they try to get him, get him straightened out? Didn't they? Didn't they? But every time he breaks out of everything. But when Jesus come in, when Jesus come in, the only thing's breaking out is the devil. He's getting out of there. Yes, he is. And they began, now just to show you how foolish some people are. And those who saw him uh, told the people in the city uh, and, 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 and about the swine. And then they began to plead with Jesus. Now, you know, this is the craziest thing. They began to plead with Jesus and they said to Jesus, depart from us. Get out of our town. Leave us alone. And when he got into the boat, listen to this stuff here. He got into the boat. Jesus got in the boat. You see, listen, if you don't want Jesus, he ain't breaking your boat down to get in it. You got me? If you don't want Jesus, he'll be, you just tell him, leave me alone. I'll go to hell by myself. I don't, I don't want to go to heaven. I'll go to hell. Because all my friends are going to be there, and we're going to have a party. You're lying to yourself. There ain't no party in hell. Yeah, have you ever uh, heard of how a woman has a baby? She don't be laughing. When the hour comes and she's in great torment, she ain't for no party. She's screaming because of the pain that comes upon her. And God is saying to us today, you there is no, no, no. They said, Jesus, get away from us. Get away. Leave us alone. Jesus, okay. So I can handle this. I can do what you, I can do that. I can handle that. I'm going to get right in my boat and I'm going to keep on boating. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep on boating. But here's an interesting thing. The guy that was a demonic, the ex messed up guy, the ex, ex disturbed man, the ex Jesus support, uh, uh, Satan uh, supporter, when he saw that Jesus was leaving, I like what he did. He, 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 when Jesus got in the boat, the Bible said he who had been demon possessed begged him, begged him that he might be with him. Thank you. Nobody else wants you, Jesus. Can I get in the boat? I've been through hell and back. Can I get in the boat? Can I go with you? Can I be with you? It's been a hard time. It's been a long life for me. The Bible, you know what the scripture said about me. Always, night and day, 
for 24 hours, 24 hours a day. I've been jacked up for life. I've been jacked up since they come. You came, set me free. I've been sitting down. I've got the peace of God. I even got enough sense to put my clothes on. I'm in my right mind. Lord, where are you going? I just got to meet you. I just got to, got to, to know. Can I go with you? That should be our cry to God. The cry to God should be, Lord, can I be with you? You didn't save me. You brought me out. I was a liar, a thief, a murder, a fornicator. <laughs> you named a bunch. I was it. I was it. I spent time with this. I spent time that you might have been in pornography. You might have been in homosexuality. You might have aborted your child. You might have done a whole bunch of other things. But God, if, if the Lord ever come to you, you ought to come back and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for calling, for, for, for calling me one of your children. Thank you for setting me free. Can I get in the boat with you? I'm no longer messed up. I'm no longer turned upside down. I'm, 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 I, can I get in the boat? Now I thought, I thought it was sort of hard when I first read this. However, the Bible said, Jesus did not permit or allow him to go with him. Well, what about that? You see, Jesus didn't just, uh, didn't just save us to come to church. He saved us to go forth. Because there's somebody else that's messed up. There's somebody else that's going through a storm. And we've got to go and tell them what great things the Lord has done for us. That's our call. The Bible said, Jesus said, go to your friends. And tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and he began to proclaim and, and to capitalize all that Jesus had done for him. And those who heard him marveled. Jesus saved you for a purpose that you could be blessed for all eternity. He saved you for a purpose that you could go out and tell other people what great things the Lord has done. And what God is saying to us today, unless we overcome the fear, unless we can't overcome uh, 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 the works of the devil, we will always be messed up. You don't have to be. You do not have to be jacked up for eternity. <laughs> no. You can have a new relationship. You can be sitting in your right mind. You can be um, uh, uh, not only sitting in your right mind, you can be clothed in the things of God. And not only that, you can have the mind of God inside of you, a new creature. Therefore, if any man, woman, boy, or girl, be in Christ, that Bible tells us we are new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. You can get out of your mess, beloved. You can get out of your mess because Jesus is there to help you to get out. And not only can you get out of your mess, you can stay out of your mess because the Holy Spirit is God's comforter to us. Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to leave you I'm sending you, in other words, a comforter, and he shall be with you. And he will take the things of myself, for Jesus is speaking, and he will teach you these things. Beloved, right now, as you listen to me today, God is saying a couple of things to you. If, you. if you're not where he wants you to be, he's not condemning you for that. Not at all. He's saying to you today that if you trust me, if I can get that demonic man out of his mess, I can get you out of yours. I can give you peace. I can make you get yourself dressed a different way in your thinking and your process and even the way you dress physically. Because I'm convinced of one thing. Once a person come to know the Lord, they don't dress any kind of way. 
physically, with your, your, your garments. All that stuff changes. You know why? Because you got the right mind. And you know, people say, well, why do church people dress up? Because they go always in the presence of the king. I'm always in the presence of King Jesus. And not only that, my thought process has changed tremendously. And so what God is saying to us, you don't have to stay in your mess. Jesus can set you free. He is the liberator. In fact, it'd be better if I said, and you could say, and I am saying, he is my liberator. I went through a lot in my life. But he brought me out. His blood can wash away your sins and make you whole. Run to Jesus while you have the time. He is more than able to set you free. If you haven't asked Christ to come into your life, now is the time. Now is the time to ask the Lord to forgive you. No matter how messed up you are, no matter what people think about you, you might have been on the streets, or you might have been in prison. You might have done some horrible things. Now, even murder. God forgives people of murder when they come to Christ. All things, all things, all things are forgiven in Christ Jesus through his blood. And so what Jesus is asking us to do today is to believe in him. He paid the debt. He didn't know. I owed and you owed that debt, and we couldn't pay. When I see Jesus now by faith coming, I run to him. It's like in the old days when whenever the preacher used to come, it's probably still the same way. The people would run and hide and throw away the liquor bottles. And I tell people, no need in hiding from me. I can't do nothing to hurt you. You need the Throw that stuff away because Jesus is coming for you. So if you're here today and you feel like you need to have Christ to come into your life or you need a strength from God, would you pray with me now? Let's pray. Oh God eternal in heaven, I believe today that you died on that cross for me. I believe today that if I had been the only sinner in the whole world, you would have given your life just for me. I thank you because you were righteous and you offered righteousness. Whereas the first Adam sinned and offered and gave me death. You took the sting out of death and you have made me a new creature. I'm asking you, Lord, now come into my heart, come into my life, save me, forgive me, and make me that wonderful person. And Lord, help me to walk away from my mess so that I can walk in your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our information, thank God for your watching uh, and sharing with us today. Um, our information will be posted at the conclusion of my message today. And um, you can um, contact us. We got, all, we got the post office box there. You can write us. You can call us on the telephone. Leave us a message. We'll get back with you. Uh, text, whatever. Do something uh, and let us know that you're hearing us. God bless all of you, and may you understand you don't have to stay in your mess. God has set you free. Amen.